So the next part of the radio we're going to move on to is the TALO detector, uh, also known as a quadrature sampling detector. So this circuit's function is to produce a quadrature baseband or audio signal that's the difference between the local oscillator frequency and the incoming RF frequency. Now there's a full description of the uh, TALO detector by the man himself, Dan TALO, and I'll provide a uh, link to that in the, in the video links. Uh, what I've got below here is the actual schematic uh, that, I, that I've built up for the TALO detector. And uh, it consists of the following components. So here's the bandpass filter that I mentioned earlier on. And that basically uh, allows between roughly 6.5 and 7.5 megahertz signals to pass through uh, unattenuated and attenuates all other signals. The next component is this uh, 2.5 volt bias circuitry right here. And what that does is it, uh, it attaches a 2.5 volt bias to the uh, split signal here that gets uh, passed into the TALO detector. And the reason for that primarily is to avoid having separate bias circuitry for the following op amps in the, uh, in the circuit. The next part of the circuit involves the TALO detector itself. And this consists of an FST3253 uh, 4 to 1 mul multiplexer demultiplexer. And that's driven by the local oscillator input that comes from the SI5351 that's controlled by the Tiny Pico. And these two local oscillator signals are in quadrature, so in other words, 90 degrees out of phase with respect to one another. The other part of the TALO detector is this uh, capacit bank of capacitors here, and that's the sampler at the heart of the quadrature, quadrature sampling detector. And then finally, we have uh, these, uh, this LM358, which is a uh, dual op amp, and that basically provides uh, amplification for the uh, resulting baseband signals here. So you'll get RF coming in here. Your local oscillator will be very close to the RF uh, frequency that you're, trying to, uh, that you're trying to listen to. And then out of here, you're going to get not RF, but the actual audio signal coming out. So your local oscillator, say, is set to 7 megahertz, and your RF is, uh, let's say, 7 megahertz plus 500 hertz, then you'll get 500 hertz coming out of here. I'm going to demonstrate the function, but first uh, let me walk you through the, uh, the board uh, and the test setup that I've got here. So uh, here's the incoming uh, RF signal. This is the bandpass filter. And these two uh, variable caps are used to adjust the, uh, the signature of the bandpass filter. Here's the uh, bias circuitry right here. Here's the two uh, local oscillator signals coming through from the uh, SI5351, controlled by the Tiny Pico. And then here's that bank of capacitors that I mentioned uh, that's on the, uh, the output side of the, um, of the uh, 3253. Uh, now, on the underside of the board is where the, uh, the two ICs are, and if I gingerly pick this up, so the uh, IC on the left is the LM358, and that SMD IC on the right there is the uh, uh, FST3253 uh, multi multiplexer demultiplexer. Well, let's gently put that back down again, and then I can demonstrate the, uh, the actual output. Let's go through the test setup on the, uh, on the schematic first and then I'll uh, show you through the board. So I'm injecting the uh, local oscillator uh, signal here at uh, 7.149.5 uh, megahertz coming through here. So as I said before, these two are at uh, 90 degrees out of phase one another, one another. From my signal generator, I'm injecting a 7.15 megahertz signal into uh, the, uh, through the bandpass filter and into the TALO detector. So what we expect to see at the output here is a signal at roughly the, at the difference of those two, which is 500 hertz. And I have my uh, oscilloscope set up to probe this output here and this output here. So let's have a look at the uh, oscilloscope. So let's have a look uh, closely at the uh, signals coming through on the oscilloscope there. So. Just to reiterate the test setup here, I've got the uh, uh, signal generator injecting a 7.150 megahertz signal 
and I've got my local oscillator controlled by the tiny Pico set to 7.150.5. 0. So basically a 500 hertz difference between those two signals. And you can see on the oscilloscope here, I've got two signals in quadrature, 90 degrees out of phase one another, and the difference between them is roughly 500 hertz. You can see it's about 507 hertz. So just to demonstrate uh, uh, the, the kind of the power of the, uh, of the quadrature oscillator, let me adjust the uh, local oscillator so I'm 500 hertz below that signal. Now you can see the actual frequency is still around, roughly around 500 hertz, but now the yellow trace is leading the purple trace. So let's demonstrate that once more. So moving up, purple, purple trace leads the yellow trace. And then moving down, purple trace is trailing the yellow trace. So that's basically the mechanism that's used uh, in the following section, section the phase shifter, to uh, remove the unwanted sideband. Anyway, that's, uh, that's all I have uh, in this video. Um, kind of the radio is uh, moving along pretty well. The phase shift is always a little bit tricky to build because uh, it does involve uh, uh, high t uh, low tolerance components. Um, so that'll be coming up next. And uh, what I might also do is, um, if you have a look down on the board here, I've got uh, a 16-bit uh, analog to digital converter here. What I might try and do is uh, uh, hook this up to the incoming signal and then uh, create a, uh, a poor man's uh, level, uh, signal level uh, display in the LCD. So that's to come in the next video. One final uh, thing before I uh, bef before I go though, I will take you through some of the uh, challenges I had uh, sort of pulling this board together. So I, I used my usual mechanism to print double sided boards, so no problems there. Um, you know, obviously the you know when you kind of put this all together, is inevitably a couple of components that you forget to solder properly, particularly when you've got to solder on both sides of the board. Uh, I make these all myself, so there's no veers on these board at all, so it's strictly solder on both sides of the board. Uh, first problem um, I had is uh, I blew the, FS, the, FST, the other FST uh, 3253 that I had on here, so it took me ages to figure out what was going on there. Uh, and then after I'd done that, I couldn't figure out the 2.5 volt bias circuitry wasn't wasn't working. That was the next thing. Um, kind of measure it and it was like 0.1 or 0.2 of a volt instead of uh, 2.5 volts as it should be. And it turned out I'd blown another of the FST 3253s. I, I mustn't be handling them right or something. So that was the uh, the third problem. Uh, I actually rewound the tri-filler uh, because one of the things I noticed is that uh, the, uh, the some of the windings were actually touching uh, and then finally, I had to replace the uh, LM358 op amp. Originally, I was using uh, an LM, uh, I think, 4265. Uh, and I tried a whole pile of those, and I must have either gotten a bad batch or uh, I wasn't doing something right, but uh, I couldn't get any of them to work. Um, and so uh, after doing all that, finally it, uh, you know, it got together. Um, that took the better part of a Sunday morning, uh, sort of debugging all that sort of stuff. Um, I mean, uh, I guess if anyone's interested in uh, watching me debug this stuff, I, I'm happy to put up a video. I get, uh, I assumed most people wouldn't be, but anyway, uh, I thought I'd add sort of that that, that sort of troubleshooting uh, um, just uh, for interest sake.